Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Topping our news today at noon, we're learning more about the lives of the father and daughter who died in a bizarre accident at the Venice Jetty earlier this week. 64-year-old Carol Hayden and her father, 88-year-old Eugene Hayden, were inside their van when Carol drove off the South Jetty in Venice Monday afternoon. The vehicle eventually sank and both of them died. They were residents of the Village of the Isle Retirement Home in Venice. A press conference took place at the, per the retirement home this morning. One by one, staff and close friends came up to talk about the father and daughter. Eugene, who was also known as Gene, was a photographer for the retirement community, also did a lot of press releases for it. His daughter, Carol, was described as loving and a religious woman who spent time with everyone. Carol was always somebody with her table of, of lady friends. Why, they were quite a group. You could always find them together. We're in shock. We're, we're surprised because these are just such wonderful, outgoing people. The pair lived in Nokomis before moving to Venice. The Haydens are described as having an extremely close relationship. The retirement community also released a statement saying they're offering grief counseling and religious support in the days ahead. Also in Venice, a memorial remembering the Haydens is growing at the Venice Jetty. ABC 7's Jacqueline Matter has been at the site all morning long talking to those passing by. She joins us now live with more. Jacqueline. Good afternoon, Scott. Certainly a sad scene here in Venice all day today. People have been coming by this memorial all day, bringing everything from flowers to hands with the written on it. That memorial was set up early this morning to remember Jean and Carol Hayden. Those close to them at their retirement home say they were both well known in the Venice community. One woman I spoke with says she visits the jetty often and was sad to see the memorial today. Oh my God, just heartbroken, yeah. I, I mean, I could see it in my mind, the terrible moment when that happened to these two people. Now, this memorial will be up all day today for anyone who wants to come by and pay their respects. There will also be a candlelight vigil tomorrow evening starting at 730 at the Village on the Isles Retirement Home that is open to the public, but space will be limited. Live in Venice, Jacqueline Matter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jacqueline, thank you so much. In other news, jury selection is expected to wrap up later today for a Manatee County triple murder trial. That trial for Andres Avalos is expected to last about three weeks. Avalos is accused of killing his wife Amber, her friend Denise Potter, and Pastor James Tripp Battle back in December of 2014. If convicted, he could face the death penalty. Two new commissioners elected last night in the city of Sarasota, Hagen Brody and Jennifer A. Hearn Koch, winning at-large seats on the city commission, defeating Martin Hyde. The top two vote-getters winning last night's three-person runoff. We had a chance to catch up with one of the winners as well as a candidate who was defeated. I'm very excited. I mean, the City Commission is a platform to make a huge difference in the course of this city. This is a city that I grew up in. This is a city that I care deeply about. I got thumped. I mean, uh, I didn't anticipate that. I, uh, I thought that uh, I ran a campaign on instinct from the heart. Um, it clearly wasn't where Sarasota was at this time. Ahern Koch could not be reached for a comment. Both she and Brody will be sworn in on Friday. In Northport, two candidates vying for a seat on the city commission there. Jill Luke, the unofficial winner, taking 53% of the vote over Pete Emrich, who had 47%. Luke is a longtime Northport resident and has been in business management for more than 20 years. She stopped by Good Morning Suncoast this morning to talk about her platform and the experience she's hoping to bring to the city commission. The, the business experience, uh, the budget writing, uh, the community, but also because of working with the chambers and the boards and that that I sit on, I bring in the resource in, of business partnerships, you know, relationships throughout the entire region. We also talked to Emrich last night, who was supportive of Luke's new position. Wish Jill the best of luck and congratulations to her. I mean, it, it, it wasn't a bad, bad moment throughout this whole campaign. I got to meet a lot of people, got a lot of citizens' input. Luke will take seat four on the Northport City Commission. It was vacated by Jacqueline Moore, who resigned to run for a different position. New this afternoon, we now have official numbers for voter turnout in both Sarasota and Northport. In Sarasota, more than 8,500 people turned out to vote. That's a 22% turnout. 
More than 4,600 voted in Northport, which represents only a 10% turnout. Sarasota County Election Supervisor Ron Turner says election numbers did, though, exceed the turnout of the elections in March. Let's get a check on our weather now. Meteorologist John Scalzi joins us with uh, another uh, dry, Hot, dry, sunny yeah. day. Yes, indeed. Uh, today, though, a little bit different than previous days in that uh, the entire Sun Coast now under a fire weather watch as well as a red flag warning. So kind of a dangerous situation. In fact, all along the west coast of Florida, we right. have that situation in progress. Mm. So hopefully, you know, as we head into the next couple of days, we might work in a chance of rainfall, but not today. Mm. Yep. A lot of dry air out there. We're looking at a beautiful start to the day with only a few fair weather clouds around. Yesterday, we hit 90 degrees. That's like a 4th of July temperature, not a Mother's Day temperature. And that's certainly possible in many locations. Again, today, uh, we have red flag warnings up across the entire region, really. And uh, the fire danger, extremely high. Uh, Titan radar not showing any rainfall across, uh, really, the whole deep south, but the Florida Peninsula as well. We have some cloud cover gathering back to the west. Now, that will eventually turn into our hope for rain showers this week. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes, but certainly not today. Dry as a bone. Daytime highs in the upper 80s to near 90. We'll talk about the forecast for the weekend coming up in just a few. Scott. All right, John, thank you. Now to the big news out of Washington. President Trump firing the FBI director in charge of the investigation into President Trump's campaign and possible collusion with the Russians. The termination comes just a day after the president called that investigation a hoax. ABC's Janae Norman has more. The Russia-Trump collusion story is a total hoax. When will this taxpayer-funded charade end? President Trump tweeting that question and following up less than 24 hours later with an official letter seeming to answer, informing the man leading that investigation, quote, you are hereby terminated and removed from office effective immediately. We're conducting an investigation to understand whether there was any coordination between Ru the Russian efforts and anybody associated with the Trump campaign. FBI Director James Comey drawing the ire of the president, first officially shutting down Trump's claim he was wiretapped by President Obama and then confirming an FBI counterintelligence investigation. But despite that, Trump writing as he announced Comey's firing, I greatly appreciate you informing me on three separate occasions that I am not under investigation. That is a tell. That shows that we have a deeply insecure president who understands that the noose is tightening because of this Russia investigation. And that's why I believe he has let Jim Comey go. Trump tweeting, Comey lost the confidence of almost everyone in Washington, Republican and Democrat alike. When things calm down, they will be thanking me. Our Democratic colleagues complaining about the removal of an FBI director whom they themselves repeatedly and sharply criticized. But Democrats alleging a cover-up. The inescapable conclusion from the circumstantial evidence here is the president wanted to stop or stifle this investigation. This administration has now removed several law enforcement officials in a position to conduct independent investigations of the president and his administration. Democrats and even some Republicans are now calling for a special prosecutor to take over the Russia investigation. That would be up to the attorney general, but as Jeff Sessions has recused himself, it would fall to his deputy. And at this point, it's unclear if Rod Rosenstein will make that call. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. Cuts to visit Florida could have some negative impacts on tourism in Sarasota County. Florida lawmakers slashing the budget to the state's tourism promotion agency to only $25 million. The Sarasota Herald Tribune reporting the cuts could mean a drop in tourism here by 200,000 visitors. Last year, the county welcomed 2.4 million visitors. Visit Florida has been under fire for months with claims of misused funding, including a controversial contract with rapper Pitbull to market tourism in the state. Happening today, one of the biggest job fairs of the year is taking place on the Sun Coast, the Manatee County Job Expo, taking place at the Bradenton Area Convention Center this afternoon in Palmetto. Uh, representatives from county departments will be there with information on job opportunities in a variety of fields. Current job vacancies include bus operators, 911 emergency dispatchers, industrial electricians, and paramedics. Employers will be giving interviews, and job offers can be given on the spot pending a background check and drug screening. The expo begins at 2 o'clock. Sarasota County's job fair is set for Friday. 
Let's get over to the kitchen now and check in for the first time with ABC7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher. Hello, Judy. Hi there, Scott. I'm getting ready for Mother's Day. While I won't be cooking, I'll leave that to the family. Several people will, and I want to give you some <coughs> tips on how you can make Mother's Day bright, but easy so you can spend more time pampering mom instead of hours in the kitchen. I'm going to make a pan-seared salmon, <coughs> excuse me, with grilled asparagus and an orange hollandaise. <coughs> and a fresh bright berry salad with mint and rosé wine. Don't think of rosé wine as your white Zinfandel. It's not. It's going to be a delicious, wonderful way to welcome Mother's Day and a warm weekend. So stay with me. We'll be cooking up bright and beautiful dishes in just a few minutes. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School, serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better, and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice, and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with Mom but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud, too. Going on now. For every two windows you buy, get one more free. Call today. Why settle for less? Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Nobody beats Subaru in service, quality, vehicle quality, and overall quality. And ALG named Subaru the 2017 top brand for residual value. Now lease the most fuel-efficient vehicle in its class, a new Subaru Outback for just $2.29 a month, or get 0% financing with complimentary maintenance included. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. So yesterday we were at 87 degrees at this hour. Today we're at 84. And one of the reasons for that is the air was drier yesterday. Actually, we have a dew point value now at 65, which, while not humid, is certainly a little bit stickier than dew points in the 50s, which are terribly comfortable. Uh, dew points in the mid 60s start to feel a little sticky, but our air temperature will be high enough today that our relative humidity will be fairly low this afternoon. Hence the red flag warnings, the fire uh, weather watches, etc. Moist air, it, it's uh, with the, the dry air in a desert, cools off, it gets cold at night in a desert, and then it warms up quickly. But moist air takes a little while longer because uh, moisture, water, has the ability to really kind of hold on to heat and it doesn't really release it to the air. West wind comes in at about 12. That'll continue to pump a little bit more moisture our way. Over the next several days, we'll see that moisture increasing. We'll, uh, we'll notice that particularly, I think, in morning temperatures, which will start to get a little bit warmer as well. 87 degrees, Wachula 88, Arcadia, Mayaka 87, and Parish Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch 88, Northport. Inglewood comes in at 80, 82 in Venice, 78 degrees Longboat Key. That onshore wind really now 
starting, beginning to do its summer-like thing, which is keeping our coast a little bit cooler while inland temperatures really start to get warm. Um, as we head into the afternoon, that sea breeze will continue on. It won't really produce any rainfall, though, unlike it might in summer. We just have dry air aloft. We have this big ridge of high pressure, this sinking dome of air. The mechanisms aren't in place to produce these uh, sea breeze showers that we would normally have across the region. Uh, currently, the deep south, in fact, is pretty devoid of any rain showers at this time. The earlier showers near Raleigh are gone. We have uh, really kind of pleasant conditions in Charlotte, Atlanta. You got to go way back to the west near Oklahoma and points westward before you start to see any real storm activity. Uh, there, there could be some severe storms actually in this area. Exiting out of the, at least out of the Rockies and moving into the center part of the United States, these low pressure areas could trigger off some stronger storms. We're going to be watching a frontal boundary develop over the course of the next few days and gradually drift in this direction. It could break down that high pressure ridge a little bit, a little bit, and maybe on Saturday, give a shower or two. That's the front there, not due to arrive here till Saturday. But the thing is, once it does arrive here, there'll be not enough moisture and there'll be residual high pressure. The front will fall apart and then high pressure will build back in again very quickly. So the dry weather pattern is not going to change all that much. It sticks with us and the fire danger will remain high. Taking a look at the forecast, well, on uh, to, uh, today, we're going to get pretty close to the 90 degree mark once again. I think tomorrow we may get pretty close to it. Friday, I think we'll see a few more clouds around as that front tries to chip away at the high. Saturday, as that front washes out, we may get a slight chance at a shower or two. Certainly no drought busting rain. And then Sunday, high pressure builds back in. It's a lovely day. Mother's Day looks to be just fine and rain free. Scott. All right, John, thank you. In health news, if you're a senior citizen, there are some questions you may want to ask your doctor before you start an exercise program. Kim Hutcherson has more. Physical activity is one of the best things you can do for your health. Not only can it help control your weight and increase your chances of living longer, it lessens your risk for a variety of diseases and conditions and can even improve your mood. But before you start an exercise program, you should always check in with your physician. If you're a senior citizen, the National Institute on Aging recommends you ask the following questions. First, make sure you're up to date with preventive care and that you've had all the tests required for your age group and health category. Second, ask if there are any activities or exercises you should avoid. Your doc can make recommendations just for you based on your personal health history and help you avoid problems that might derail your fitness plans. Third, ask how any health conditions you have might impact your ability to exercise. Your doctor can help you modify certain activities based on your medical profile. Remember, everyone can benefit from exercise, and it's never too late to get started. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Up next, tragedy for the family of a well-known ESPN sportscaster. And then later, more chaos in the skies, details on the latest fight brawl, and what measures are being put into place to prevent any more from happening. SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high performance parts and advice. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, restaurant guide, and more. Go to MySuncoast.com slash dining. What Florida city is best known for space flight? Cape Carnival. Cape Carnival? Close enough! What condiment includes vinegar, molasses, and anchovies? West Chester sauce? Close enough! And now, a word from our sponsors. One off from the Florida Lottery. Now available for pick two, three, four, and five games. Miss by one on any or all numbers and still win. You only have one life. Are you gambling with it? One in three adults have high blood pressure. Not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time. Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. 
don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash HPV. Everyone loves a bright and cheerful smile. Not everyone can find the dental care they need and can afford. Now there's a place nearby where anyone can receive professional quality dental care at an affordable cost. The LeCom School of Dental Medicine in Lakewood Ranch is now accepting patients. You will receive your care in comfortable, state-of-the-art treatment rooms. To schedule your appointment, please call the LeCom Dental Group Practices, 941-405-1600. We will be happy to see you smiling again. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. The wife of ESPN's most well-known sportscaster dies in a car crash. Connecticut State Police say 67-year-old Catherine Ann Berman, the wife of Chris Berman, was one of two victims in the two-vehicle crash yesterday afternoon. Police say Berman crashed into the rear of another vehicle, sending both vehicles off the road. ESPN President John Skipper said in a statement, the death is a devastating tragedy, difficult to comprehend, and pledged to give Chris Berman the love and support he will surely need at this hour. Berman was scheduled to be one of the honorees at Friday's Dick Vitale Gala at the Ritz-Carlton in Sarasota. The San Antonio Spurs take the lead in the Western Conference semifinals. The Spurs beating the Houston Rockets last night to go up three games to two. <clears throat> in this best of seven series. Danny Green scoring seven of his 16 points in overtime to help the Spurs beat the Rockets 110 to 107. And 39 year old Manu Ginobili blocked the potential game time three pointer just before the buzzer. The Spurs will try to wrap up the series Thursday night in Houston. In the Stanley Cup playoffs, the Ottawa Senators moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. It's the first for the team in 20 years. Last night, the Senators faced off against the Rangers on their home ice. It took an early lead with a goal by Mike Hoffman, and Ottawa wins 3-2 and now awaits the winner of the Washington-Pittsburgh series. <clears throat> the Caps host the Penguins in Game 7 of their series tonight. Peyton Manning's number 18 will be retired in Indianapolis. The legendary QB will become the first Indianapolis Colts player to have his jersey retired. He'll also be added to the team's ring of honor. Manning left the Colts after the 2011 season to play for the Broncos for three seasons. The number retiring ceremony will be held October 7th when the Colts host, host the 49ers. And a statue of Manning will also be unveiled that weekend outside of Lucas Oil Stadium. Back to the kitchen now and check in on Chef Judy and see what she's cooking for Mother's Day. Judy? That's right, Scott. Well, thanks. I finally found some asparagus that's looking really big and, and yet tender because it was coming in a little skinny because it's basically out of asparagus season right here, but we can find it at different markets um, from different areas. So simple, good quality olive oil salt and pepper that's all you need in a 400 degree oven you can also steam it but i like how it brings out the sweetness by roasting it now we're going to take our salmon and i've basically let it marinate in olive oil i always do that for 15 minutes both sides we're going to cook it skin down first salt and pepper the skin is going to get nice and crispy i personally prefer the skin left on i love when it's crispy it's like going to a sushi bar when you can get salmon skin but by all means you'll see it'll peel off perfectly so in the pan it goes you know you're going to notice on this piece this side is thinner than than the thicker side so i can always cut that down in a little bit and then pop the thicker side in the oven if you don't want to cook too much don't stress out a great brunch item are these blintzes i get them over at the fresh market i grew up with blintzes my nana made them homemade and it was a labor of love but simply by just browning them in a pan with a little bit of butter little sprinkle of sugar or sugar and cinnamon on top and then something like a nice summery peach jam is going to be perfect for mom the next thing i have is 
it's better than a cheese danish this is cheese brioche so it is just delightful served just like this to mom maybe breakfast in bed or again you could grill it in a little butter now i want to show you a little bit about carving a cantaloupe for the fruit salad you're going to basically cut the ends off because you want to make sure that it holds as a base and this is so easy to do, so it looks like a caterer did it for mom, okay? So you're gonna basically go zigzag crossing. Use a good knife. Mine particular knives are shun. And if mom likes to cook and needs knives, I would highly recommend them. Those are my favorite in the kitchen. So you basically just watch where you cut and you just go around and you'll see how I open it up. We'll scoop out the seeds and that will be the vessel for our delicious berry and mint salad when we come back. So when we come back, let's get the asparagus out and I will start talking to you about that orange hollandaise and we'll finish up. It's gonna be so good. I'm gonna even enjoy it as an extra Mother's Day treat today. Happy birthday! When I turned 18, Something big happens on my birthday. Every comfort that I knew, gone. This is what it feels like to age out of the foster care system in America. And this is the feeling that nearly 30,000 young people experience every year. But it can be better. You and me, working together for success beyond 18. Improve the lives of young people aging out of foster care. Learn more at jimcaseyyouth.org. Being the caregiver for someone you love is truly a blessing. But sometimes you can lose a part of yourself. To be your best, for them and for you, it's important to have time to be able to recharge your batteries. When you call Tidewell Hospice, they can give you a chance to do just that. And with the peace of mind of knowing your loved one is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate, or shop at Goodwill, I am creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. It's no small wonder anybody loves it all. I just love art that moves me. No small I mean really moves me. Wonder. Sunset Fiat of Sarasota presents No Small Wonder. High performance style. Let the art of Fiat move you. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. Topping our news this half hour, a candlelight vigil is planned tomorrow to remember a woman and her father who were killed in a tragic accident at the Venice Jetty. 64-year-old Carol Hayden, 88-year-old Eugene Hayden died Monday afternoon when their van went off the South Jetty in Venice. Several witnesses and an officer went into the water in an attempt to save them, but were unsuccessful. The van was submerged underwater for two hours before the van and their bodies were recovered. Tomorrow's vigil is about honoring their lives. A press conference took place this morning at the Village of the Isles Retirement Community, where the pair lived. 
Staff and close friends say the father and daughter were extremely close and full of life. We celebrate lives here. Um, it's in a different fashion for us today uh, because it's a tragic loss, a sudden loss, something that's just so unexpected for us. The vigil takes place tomorrow night at 730 at the Village of the Isles in Venice. Grief counseling is also being made available to residents there. Well, it seems the hits keep on coming for air travel in the United States. More unruly passengers, flight attendants caught in the crossfire, and even pilots contributing to a culture in the sky that is anything but friendly. ABC's Emily Rao explains. Police called it a near riot in Fort Lauderdale when Spirit Airlines canceled or delayed dozens of flights on Monday. The airline blaming the pilots for a work slowdown in the middle of contract talks. Very tense, very angry, angry, angry people. Everybody had places to be. And that move prompting a judge to issue a temporary restraining order to get the pilots back to work and tensions below boiling. It's your county, Captain. This brawl on board a Southwest jet that just landed in Burbank shows a flight attendant caught right in the middle. And I see the stewardess trapped below in between the seats on the ground and she was being pummeled at the same time as the other guy was being pummeled. Southwest giving props to its employees, calling them everyday heroes, delivering heartfelt hospitality. But this Kansas City nurse not feeling the love from United. A, I'm going to need to to go. This is urgent. I, you know, I have an overactive bladder. Um, you know, can I use the, the, the restroom? She says there was no mercy from the flight attendants, leaving her no choice but to literally pee in a cup. There was just no, you know, yeah, no customer service, no compassion. That woman posting her story on Facebook because she says she couldn't get United to acknowledge her complaint. Social media and cell phone video both playing a big part in this ongoing story. Emily Rao, ABC News, New York. All right, John Scalzi is back. John, I, 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 we know it's dry, and I think this yeah. is a sign of it. This morning, I was out for a walk, and I saw a jet way up, mm -hmm. way up high, and there was no contrails, mm -hmm. which tells me that there's no moisture up there, right? The air's not cold enough up there, too. Yeah. Yeah. And no moisture, and the air's not cold enough. Okay. So you don't get uh, the condensation particles. Right. Um, that, plus the fact that, uh, you know, the fuel supply for forest fires is so plentiful right yeah. now. We have such a deficit of uh, rainfall in the second half of the winter, and a lot of rain in the beginning of the winter, which really added to the growth. Right. And then everything dried out. And so when you look at the fire danger indices, and there's a lot of them out there, uh, they all have something to do with that, uh, that dry vegetation that could release energy in the event of a fire. And uh, they're all high. Yeah. That's the problem. And rainy season's still a ways off. Yeah, it About is. a month or so. Yeah, it is. A lot of time yet for a lot of fires. And even some of these fires, you know, have contributed to particulate pollution and some ozone pollution in the atmosphere recently. And today's a better day for that sort of thing. But the winds are shifting a little bit more. But still, it's, uh, it'd be nice to get a good couple of rains around here. Casey Key webcam from this morning showing, well, not a cloud in the sky out there over the Gulf right now, looking from that view anyway. We're looking at temperatures across the region that are generally hugging the 90-degree mark in inland areas along the coastline a little bit cooler. As we head into the afternoon, I don't think you'll see much in the way of cloud cover around just a lot of sunshine and warm temperatures. And a reminder, the fire threat is high all across the Sun Coast in every county of the Sun Coast, all up and down the west coast of Florida. Scott. All right, John, thank you. A follow-up this afternoon on the hazing death of a Penn State University student. Eight more students were arraigned in the death of 19-year-old sophomore Tim Piazza. Eighteen people overall are being charged. It was a pledge for the Beta Theta Pi fraternity. Piazza fell down a flight of stairs during a night of alleged hazing and forced heavy drinking. The frat members are being charged with reckless endangerment and tampering with evidence since surveillance video of the incident was captured. It seemed like they just wanted to make sure that they themselves were safe rather than Tim truly being safe. Some of them described that he looked dead and they waited over 40 minutes before they called for help. Penn State calls the alleged details sickening and difficult to understand. The fraternity is now permanently banned. The school's president has released new guidelines on Greek life in the wake of his death. 
Developing this afternoon, cleanup is underway at the largest nuclear waste complex in the country after a part of an underground tunnel there collapsed. The incident happening yesterday at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation in Washington State. The part of the tunnel that collapsed contained stored radioactive materials. It's now a gaping hole. Soil in the surface area sank about two to four feet. No workers were inside at the time or injured, but hundreds still had to be evacuated because of safety concerns. Then they put us in take cover to make sure we were safe and we were all accounted for. There was contamination at that site, yes. Didn't spread beyond that. Crews are still testing that area today. The site made plutonium for nuclear bombs for decades after World War II. Last year, a Washington attorney filed a lawsuit against the Energy Department contending vapors released from underground nuclear waste tanks posed a serious risk to workers there. An Atlanta overpass that collapsed in a fire will soon be reopened to traffic. Transportation officials are planning to reopen a section of I-85 by next week at the latest. The overpass collapsed in March after a large fire was started underneath that bridge. Reconstruction will cost more than $16 million. Most of that cost, though, will be covered by the federal government. In other news, not as many people are heading to SeaWorld these days. Attendance at the parks was down 15% in the first quarter of the year, and attendance is even lower from 2012 during the wake of protests over the treatment of killer whales. But the company is blaming the timing of Easter this year for the decline and not controversies about the park. With the holiday in April instead of March, many schools pushed their spring breaks back, resulting in later vacations. Well, there is no dino, only Zool. Canadian scientists have named a newly discovered dinosaur fossil after Zool. Remember that, the horned demon dog from the movie Ghostbusters? The fossil is 75 million years old. It's a species of armored dinosaur. It was discovered by scientists from the Royal Ontario Museum during an unrelated dinosaur dig in Montana. They estimate Zool was around 20 feet long and weighed about 5,500 pounds with some armor, too. Let's get back to the kitchen now, see how lunch is coming along with ABC7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher. Hi, Judy. Hey there, Scott. That's pretty intense with the dinosaurs. Okay, so look at this. Remember I promised to tell you how easy it is to take off the skin? So if people like it, just lay it down and get it really brown and crispy. But this piece is just about done, so I'm going to pull it off. And you can see the thinner piece. I just was able to take my knife and cut it right through. Let's talk about the hollandaise sauce. You can make it the old-fashioned way by putting the egg yolks and strips strictly yolks, four yolks in a bowl, whisk it in tempered water, and you have to really work it, and then you slowly drizzle in melted butter. For this one, I did it in the blender, and it works just as easy. Just open that little lip on the top of the blender, put the egg yolks in, melt the butter, make sure the butter isn't steaming hot, and slowly drizzle it in. And then I just added a little orange juice, and the last thing I'm going to do after I put it on the salmon and the asparagus is I'm going to put some zest of orange on this. This is just a light, bright version of hollandaise. I don't want to make it too thick because I just want to keep the great flavor that we have of this beautiful salmon and the grilled asparagus. So this is just perfect. Now we're almost done. We have the blintzes already cooked and we used a little local Sarasota honey on top and a little preserves. Now let's come over to the fruit. Remember I told you how to cut the cantaloupe? Well, here it is. So now we look like a fancy caterer, right? I have a beautiful bottle of rosé and I'm going to take this bowl of berries and Berries are on sale this week, so it couldn't be a better time to get blueberries, blackberries, strawberries. We're going to pour some right over the fruit. Then I can add a little sweetener if I need to. I have fresh squeezed orange juice and a little rosé in there, and that just makes for something really special. So we're going to fill the cantaloupe up with the fruit, and you can put a little bit of clotted cream on the top to make it a little more like a dessert or just leave it the way it is. I love fresh berries and I can't get enough of fresh fruit. So we'll just put that like that. Boom, that's done. So we really have a complete meal, whether you want brunch, lunch, or dinner. It's a great summer dinner. So when we come back, let's cut the cake and cut the brioche and celebrate all moms. 
When caring for my wife alone became too much for me, I called my long-term care insurance company to get help from Granny Nannies. Now the most wonderful nurses help me with her care. A helping hand and a gentle heart. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. It's Lincoln's summer sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $249 per month or 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice, choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12 year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. With all the furniture choices you have, where do you shop? How about Bacon's Furniture and Bedding? Now available in Sarasota. Treat yourself to a new Beauty Sleep Queen mattress set starting at only $3.99 and save up to $800 off an adjustable base with your mattress purchase. Find huge Memorial Day discounts of up to 70% off throughout our showroom with hundreds of items ready for immediate delivery. It's the Memorial Day sales event going on now at Bacon's Furniture and Bedding. Available now in Sarasota. Nobody beats Bacon's. Mom needed more care than we could provide, so we called Granny Nannies. She now has around-the-clock caregivers, and we have peace of mind. Thanks to them, she's where she belongs, at home. A helping hand and a gentle heart. So remember, I keep talking about this dew points. I keep talking dew points. Dew points is the measure of how much moisture there is in the air. And you look across the state of Florida, and it wasn't long ago that we had 40s up here, which is like bone dry air. Now we've got 60s, which is kind of, it's not quite tropical, but it's, got, it's on the road. And that's true across the entire state, dew points in the 60s. As we head into probably by, th well, Friday, I think we may see even some dew points in the 70s as far north as uh, Ocala. I think so. 84 degrees, the air temperature dew point now at 65. We have a west wind coming in at 12. That's going to help keep our coast just a little bit cooler. Dry air aloft, that's for sure. Take a look at the water vapor imagery here in these, these tan colors that you see are dry air that will limit the number of showers that you get and that uh, will also... Um, give us a lot of sunshine around today. So the sunshine combining with some of the forest fire burning is helping to create ozone at lower levels. You know, ozone aloft, very good thing. Low zone, ozone at the surface, not so good. And with full sunshine like this, it, it helps the chemical reaction initiate that causes that. Plus the particulates in the air is also kind of a haze that you can see in the sky now. That's uh, one of the reasons for that. So Titan radar, quiet. There's no, uh, no rain showers ongoing, nor will there be today. Everything's very quiet across the deep south as well. As I mentioned, Atlanta Airport, Charlotte Airport, A-OK. -okay. You really got to go back to uh, Texas and Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, before you start to see any kind of inclement weather caused by double barrel low pressure areas ejecting out of the, uh, out of the Rockies. These lee side lows will begin to develop and ride right along this stalled frontal boundary. They're really not going to bother us all that much, except that one front may eventually develop into one that'll approach us. But the air is so dry and the high pressure ridge so strong that as that front approaches, it may chip away at the high a little bit and allow allow for that front to maybe make it into north central Florida before just washing away. That'll bring us our only chance of rainfall this week, and it won't be that much, about 20%. And then high pressure will build back in, and we'll have another period of dry weather next week. So slow moisture increase. You're already probably noticing that. No rain in the forecast for today. Cooler near the coast, warmer inland as temperatures get to pretty close to 90. You can see that spiral of clouds on our future cast here an indication of that high pressure ridge but then by friday a few clouds kind of try to make their way here as that high pressure ridge chipped away just a little bit and we get some more moisture in aloft 
Then that frontal boundary back to the west will approach on Saturday and fall apart as it does so with only minimal chances of rain. Again, fire danger index. I wrote a blog piece on this on our uh, mysuncoast.com website uh, that explains a little bit about what these fire danger indexes and uh, KBDI indexes and drought indexes are all about. Basically, they're just saying that there's a really good chance of fire. And once that fire started, the amount of dry vegetation available to release energy to create more fires is so large that that fire could rapidly spread. Plus, we get these wind surges in the afternoon that don't help a bit either with the sea breeze building. Saturday, that chance of rain, everything clears out just in time for Mother's Day. Scott? All right, John, thank you. All too often, we take for granted the advantages we have and forget those who worked and sacrificed to bring those advantages to us. ABC 7's Linda Carson introduces us to an amazing Suncoast woman whose years of hard work and determination have saved, saved countless lives. Sarasota County has emergency medical services that we take great pride in. And Dr. Linda Slumbreck is credited with leading the fight to develop these services more than four decades ago. It started back in 1968 when the only way someone could get to the hospital in an emergent basis would be to um, ride in the hearse provided by Hawkins Funeral Home. But new methods were being developed. About this time, the Florida Medical Association, Dr. Hunt, had put out uh, an article in the newspaper, the Florida Medical Association newspaper, that outlined the life-saving practices that were developed at the end of World War II through the, through the Korean War. Dr. Slumbrick, the first female physician in the emergency room at Sarasota Memorial Hospital, felt those methods would save lives. We investigated this, but there was reticence on the behalf of almost everybody trying to get this done. She got the health department and the fire chief on her side. Then three young men were struck by lightning. Two lived, one died. A reporter interviewed her. And he said to me, why did this young man die and the other two live? And I said, because he got here last. If we had emergency medical services, like those instituted in Los Angeles and that are being instituted in Miami and Jacksonville, we could save lives. The publicity helped get federal grants for rescue units. Dr. Schlumbrick developed and taught EMT courses and later paramedic courses at no pay. The first class graduated in 1972. Every step of the way, the opposition to the programs were fierce, but she never backed down. I felt that I was burying too many young people that we could save if they would get to the emergency department in time or if the rescue people could do their job. And she made sure those things happened. Her life lesson? If you believe in something, if you know there's a need, do it and just, you know, uh, take the reins and, and be a moving force. She and her husband, also a doctor, have three children and three grandchildren. And those who were involved from the beginning say every time they see one of these emergency medical units, they think of Dr. Slumbreck, and she will be honored at a special tribute on Saturday night. Linda Carson, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Linda, thank you so much. Coming up, a former Dance Mom star has a message for her supporters after being sentenced to prison. And get ready to experience the magic of Pandora. Of a preview of Disney's newest attraction coming up in entertainment news. Introducing the all new Alfa Romeo Giulia, a performance masterpiece. Race inspired handling and lightning fast response times take your drive to the next level. Find yours at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7. And if anything, I think this proposal is the same or worse than the last time they, when they were here dressed as Longbar Point. If at first you don't succeed, change the name of your project. Developer Carlos Baruf is again pushing to build along the Sarasota Bay estuary, but could it damage the fragile ecosystem? I'm Alan Cohn. We'll have the latest on where the proposal stands. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope. 
and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or, heaven forbid, replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom-built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard-sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park. Julia from Alfa Romeo. Appearance. Performance. Power. Find yours at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Oh, we're back. And I tell you what, I am in a Mother's Day vibe with all of this happening here. <laughs> I know. In fact, John, I'm giving you the blintzes to take home to your mama. Because oh, I love think that. she'll really like that. Yes. We have that beautiful cheese she brioche will. and a chantilly Thank berry you. cake. Sometimes simple things that I picked up at Fresh Market is perfect. A little rosé with fresh squeezed orange juice, rosé in the berries as well. And, of course, the pan-seared salmon with orange hollandaise and grilled asparagus. Little avocado on top just to get that healthy fat in if you're trying to eat healthy. It's going to help break down the richness of the hollandaise too. And it's perfectly cooked, I might add. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to you, Thank by the way. Thank you. I'm excited to enjoy. It's awesome. Uh, the recipe is always on our website, mysuncoast.com. Click on the dining link page. It'll take you right there with all the video instructions from Chef Judy herself. Scott. And you could enter oh. to win a gift card. Don't forget, right. moms, you can enter by signing up for our newsletter. If you haven't already, if you have, you'll be entered. Every week we give away a $50 dining card to one of these great restaurants that are on our dining page. This looks so good. Scott? All right, thank you both. In entertainment news, dance moms reality TV star Abby Lee Miller is heading to jail. A federal judge sentencing, sentencing her to a year and a day in prison for her bankruptcy fraud. Prosecutors say she tried to conceal three quarters of a million dollars from creditors. She's also busted for trying to sneak $120,000 worth of Australian currency into the country without reporting it. Some of her supporters are disagreeing with the sentence, but she has a message for them. I don't necessarily think justice was served. I don't believe that she should spend a day in jail. Live and learn. Live and learn. Her lawyer suggested community service, teaching dance to disadvantaged women while she was away. Uh, Miller says she's um, relieved about the sentence and does not plan to appeal it. Can TV for top real world politics? Well, House of Cards' Kevin Spacey thinks so. The show returns for its fifth season on Netflix at the end of the month, and Spacey says as far as drama, this new season is nuts. But he says not as crazy as the real world. A new uh, record for Beauty and the Beast, the Disney live action, is now the highest grossing PGA rated movie ever, topping $487 million in ticket sales. That surpasses the previous record holder, Finding Dory, but it's still about $90 million behind the all-time worldwide PGA champ, and that was a movie called 
Frozen. Pretty good one. Disney World is close to opening its latest attraction, Pandora, the world of Avatar, spreads across 12 acres. The attraction is based on James Cameron's box office blockbuster, Avatar. It features all of the stunning visuals which made the movie so great, such as the stunning rugged floating, floating mountains. On one attraction, guests can go on a river journey deep into a bioluminescent rainforest, uh, which was inspired by the tradition of the Navi people who live there. And you can also fly. You can link up with an avatar, get on a banshee, and go fly across Pandora. It is amazing. And the things that you encounter there is completely different than walking around on the ground. Pandora World opens on May 27th at Disney's Animal Kingdom in Orlando. For now, this will be as much Avatar as we get until the sequel comes out in 2020, which they keep pushing back as they say it will be coming out in 2020. Because the original movie, I mean, it, I think it's uh, six to eight years ago at right, least, or right. maybe more. Yeah. Still great. Though. Have you ever seen that in 3D? No. It's Ooh. amazing in 3D. I mean, I guess somebody who knows about these sort of things told me that it was one of the few movies that's actually shot with um, the, the highest resolution 3D mm -hmm. cameras right. and, and technologies. Uh -huh. And even today, that many years later, it's still stunning. Yeah. It's great. All right. Awesome. Have to go to the park to live it, right? That's that'll, right. That'll be That's fun. That's right. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. If Thank I don't see you, you before Thank the end of the you. weekend. And uh, have a great day, everyone. We invite you back at 5 o'clock. See you then. Good Morning Sun Coast. Hi, I'm Ray Collins. It's the 10th annual National Women Build Week, and tomorrow, Habitat for Humanity will raise the walls on a house in Bradenton. That's tomorrow on Good Morning Sun Coast. John? We're watching dry weather continuing on the Sun Coast, but there's hope down the road for a few showers anyway. We'll talk about when that might occur bright and early tomorrow. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. From meeting curious lemurs to feeding big cats and hosing down rhinos, there's never a dull moment. And sometimes these amazing animals chime in. Watch Animal Outtakes every week on ABC 7.